Okay. All right. So let's uh, get started. We'll talk about uh, a measurement of performance. Okay. And then the question is, uh, well, what do we mean by? Um, okay. Oops. Well, whose performance are we going to measure? Uh, your performance or the stock's performance? Or the fund managers with whom perhaps you have money kept in case you're not fully managing your own money? Why should we measure at all? Uh, and when should we measure or when all should we measure? And what should we use to measure? Okay. So uh, we will talk about what performance is and what are the various uh, measurement uh, metrics as well, okay? So uh, given that I'm, I'm going to go through uh, the, the slides fairly fast and then take questions at the end. So if you would just to hold your questions or you can keep typing in the uh, chat box so you don't forget it. And then we'll take up uh, all the uh, questions uh, towards the end, okay? Now, I don't know whether you know this, but in the US, a barber cannot cut hair till he or she has spent 1,500 hours studying and training uh, as an apprentice and getting a, uh, a, a license to, to cut hair. Do you know that? And, and if a barber has to uh, go through this, I'm asking the question, how about an investor? Should we be studying and getting trained and certified to be an investor when we put our hard-earned money? Uh, if we give our money to a fund manager, we expect the fund manager to be certified and uh, qualified and all that licensed. But we don't apply the same criteria to ourselves when we manage our own money. So I'm glad that most of us have started taking Pradeep's courses but uh, uh, what we learn from this course is just the beginning and there's a lot more to learn. And one important aspect is, is this uh, issue of uh, measuring how we do, okay? So uh, now that uh, I've sort of got you thinking about uh, learning more about investments, I'll talk about a few things that I keep telling everybody that if you take care of your health and wealth in the first 30 years, between 20 and 50, I think you can enjoy your life after 50. And, and uh, just like you cannot outsource your physical exercise to anybody else, you need to do it yourself. Even though you may have a fitness trainer, you need to handle your own investments regularly for financial fitness. So that is uh, something I keep emphasizing a lot so think about this, okay? So let's talk about how do we build our portfolio? Uh, because we are going to talk about uh, uh, portfolio measurement of our portfolio performance. So uh, how do we build it? As you know all around, already with the PC scores, uh, you know, these are questions that uh, you might have addressed. Uh, how many stocks do we have? How much do we invest in each stock? Should we uniformly put our money in each of those? And uh, we will talk about how do we review or when do we review our portfolio. Okay. So portfolio is nothing but a basket of stocks. Don't have more than 30. It's very, very difficult. Uh, I hope uh, Radhakrishnan is hearing me. And uh, you don't need to spread your investments equally, but don't concentrate also. Uh, the whole idea of having 30 stocks is to diversify. So uh, once you decided to diversify, then don't concentrate in a few of those stocks, okay? And always keep some cash in your portfolio for uh, emergencies or opportunities. And again, diversify across sectors rather than uh, just concentrating in one sector like technology or whatever. More importantly, be regular in your investment journey and consistent in, in uh, uh, what you do. Uh, it's this consistency which is going to uh, give us good returns. And what is that return we are going to see today, okay? So the secret to success, uh, there's uh, no secret at all. Uh, it's just pure hard work 
a lot of preparation, hard work, and learning from our failures, okay? So for that, we need to keep record. We need to uh, remember what we've done so we can analyze what we've done. So keeping track of our own uh, transactions is very important, okay? Don't just take from the computer, uh, download uh, the broker's uh, uh, report and think that you've kept record, no. You need to keep your own records so that you can, can uh, go back and analyze what you've done, okay? So one of the exercises I would give you is for you to uh, back test your strategy. And you know you would have all done this as part of profit seminar, uh, but if you've not executed it for all your stocks, it's extremely important that at least over three years, uh, test your strategy. And obviously this is a strategy you're going to finally pick and be consistent with that one strategy, but uh, back test your strategy and write down your trades in an Excel and calculate the returns. How to calculate the returns, we are going to talk today, okay? So the two exercises I'm going to leave you with, one is a back testing and the other one you'll see now, okay? So set your goals, you know, and, and this is uh, something which uh, is important for various reasons, but once you set your goal and your mind to it, uh, I'm telling you, you will achieve it. If you're sincere about goal, if you're able to visualize your goal, you will achieve it. And, and I've experienced it in, in uh, various uh, ways, and I'm sure uh, uh, you can all do that as well, okay? But be specific, uh, so you can say, I want 20% by uh, next year, whatever. So it would be attainable. Don't say I want 150%, you know? Uh, so uh, be reasonable, be, uh, you know, relevant to, to what you're doing and, and be time bound. So that's the whole idea of being a smart goal setter, okay? Now, the second exercise I'm going to leave you with is to start doing forward testing of your strategy. One is back testing, the other is forward testing. How do you do forward testing? You do paper trading. Now, vbull.com, uh, anyone can open an account, not a brokerage account, but a plain account, which will give you access to paper trading. And they give you, I think, about a million dollars to build your portfolio. It's all paper, funny money, but you can uh, you can uh, trade. Only thing is, it'll be your stock, so it really doesn't matter. You can test out your strategy in any market. They're all the same, okay? So if you can uh, do back testing and forward testing or whatever be your strategy, uh, first write down your strategy, saying this is when I will buy and this is when I will sell, this is when I will hold. So primarily these rules are what we call strategy. And if you do that and, and begin your uh, back testing and forward testing, then uh, we will figure out how to calculate our returns, okay? So uh, how do we compare stocks? Given that you're going to uh, pick about 30 stocks from a population of 5,000 stocks, how do we compare these stocks? Which one do we decide to invest in? Uh, obviously, you know, uh, the one which gives uh, higher returns, but then what is this return you're looking at? So you need to be able to measure the performance, the market price performance of a stock with respect to another stock so that you can decide where to put your money. So unless you compare uh, these stocks in terms of how they are performed, over a long period of time, um, under various uh, market conditions, uh, you can't uh, just like that put your money in one versus the other. You need to have a, a strong rationale for uh, doing this, okay? So that is something you're going to learn now. Okay, so one is we need to be able to compare the performance of a particular stock in the market not necessarily what you've invested in, but before you invest, uh, you need to do that. And then once you start investing and build up, building up your portfolio, you need to analyze the performance of your portfolio, which per primarily means your performance, because you, you decided to buy, you decided to sell. So we need to understand how your strategy has uh, resulted in, in, in uh, uh, outcomes, okay? 
So how much returns are you making? Uh, is it in the total portfolio or in the individual stocks? Does the collection of individual stocks make up the whole portfolio? Uh, in which case, how do we understand portfolio as different from performance of a stock? And what kind of period, regular period that we need to uh, check our returns and, and uh, across the experience. So we compare what we did in 22 to 23, or, or what are those periods across which we are going to compare? And are we going to compare this in terms of our own performance over a period of time, or are we comparing it to what the market is performing? And, and how do we compare our performance with respect to the market? Okay, so these are all questions. Hopefully we'll find some answers today, okay? So there are returns and returns and returns. There are multiple things. Different people use different things and it can be confusing. And, and uh, uh, that's why I thought it's important that uh, we have a, um, a session on this today. Uh, for one, you know, this is uh, uh, an outcome of what PC is teaching. And uh, unfortunately, the time that uh, PC has for his courses, uh, we don't have enough to, to spend time on all this because what we are learning from PC is a lot more important than this. So uh, some of the uh, peripheral topics I keep uh, uh, chipping in in between, okay? So there are four kinds of uh, returns that people talk about. One is absolute returns. How much have we made? Absolute. The other is annual return. Every year, how much are we making? You know, I put annual return. It can be quarterly also, but annual is, is uh, one uh, popular uh, period for which we measure how much money we have made from our investment. The other return is called CAGR, Compounded Annual Growth Rate. And the other one is called IRR, Internal Rate of Return. Now, different uh, institutions, uh, when they give the reports to you, okay. Okay, so if you have a fund manager who's managing your money, and uh, sometimes when they give the report, they'll put some percentage, you won't know what that percentage is. And they say, this is how much you've made, you are, uh, we have made for you. So you need to be able to ask, what is this percentage you're mentioning? Is it CAGR, is it IRR, is it annual you know, um, uh, return or absolute return, okay? Now, uh, let me, okay. So what is this absolute return? It's the simplest form of calculation where let's say you put 100 rupees at the beginning of a period and at the end of the period, whatever be the end, it could be one month, it could be one year. So let's take one year, uh, you, you got 200 rupees. So let's say, I'm sorry, five years I put here, okay? So in five years, your 100 rupees has become 200 rupees. That means the profit that you've made, the gains that you've made over these five years is 100 rupees. So what is the absolute return? Absolute return is 200 over 100. Okay. So uh, you put 100, you have made 100 uh, uh, as a gain. The end value is 200. So the gain is 100. So the absolute return is 100%. Okay. Now this absolute return does not consider the period in which you have made it. So we are not saying here 100% per year. We are saying your absolute return is 100%. You put 100 rupees, at the end of the period, you got uh, 200 rupees, so your gain is 100. So I should have put, uh, under, you know, uh, absolute return is uh, not 200 over 100, it should be 100 over 100, okay? Uh, that's a mistake. Now, then what is the annual average return? Is there a, okay, the, the annual average return is otherwise known as a simple interest rate, okay? Simple rate. 
So the beginning value is 100, end value is 200. So we have made a profit of 100 rupees. Okay. And we have made 100 rupees over five years. So the return per year is an average of 20. And 20 rupees per year is the 20% over the 100 that we have initially put. So 20% is your simple interest rate that you've made. Okay. So annual average return is equal to absolute return divided by the period in which you make that. Okay. But this, while it's a very simple calculation, you don't need a computer to do it. It does not take into account that the money has been there for five years. So there's no interest on interest or, or return over the gains every year. There's no compounding uh, which is happening here in this calculation. So it's a very simple rate that we compute, okay? Now we move to a bit more complicated uh, uh, criteria and, and uh, that requires some amount of uh, uh, mathematical working. So we use a computer for that. And this is called a CAGR, compounded annual growth rate. Okay, so this compounding period, it's called the rest. Okay, now normally we take one year, every year what we make, hopefully, let's say we make 10% uh, over the initial investment of 100. So at the end of one year, it should be 110. So the next year, if we make the same 10%, it should be on 110. So we should make 11. Can you mute yourself, please? Okay, so this is uh, a compounding rate, okay? Now, to calculate this CAGR, we need two things. I don't know, somebody is... Uh... Can you all mute yourself, please? Okay, please mute yourself. Okay. So, no, there we have somebody called CH Pathi. I think he is unmute. That is why all these disturbances are coming. Yeah, I don't know how to uh, mute from. You can there. mute. You can mute all of them for as a yeah, as a administrator. Okay. Yes. Okay. You, right. you can you can force mute them. Okay. I, I all right. Let's not uh, spend time. I don't know how to do that. So all right. So we need three things uh, in order to calculate this CAGR, which is the beginning value of the investment in this case hundred rupees, the ending value which is two hundred rupees, and the time period in this case, uh, five years. Now, we call it five years because you're compounding every year, or you can say 60 months, in which case the compounding period, the rest is monthly, okay? Now, CAGR is definitely better than an average, annual average return figure, because it takes into account how the investment return is compounded over every period, whatever that period is, whether it's a month or a quarter or, or a um, year, okay? So a CAGR uh, you know, is a better way of computing your performance than a simple uh, average uh, rate or the absolute rate, okay? So now we have got three different returns we have seen. One is the absolute, the second is the annual, and the third is the compounded annual growth rate. Now we are going to go into another one, which is a bit more complex and definitely requires a computer to do this work for us, okay? And it's called the internal rate of return or IRR, simply put. And in Excel, we use a function XIRR to compute this. Now, this IRR, uh, variable, it considers cash flow 
in any period. So multiple cash flows may be happening in, in different uh, timings. And therefore, this is a much more complex, but very, very precise way of computing how much uh, our investments, which are going in and out, when we make a purchase, cash is going out. When we sell the stock, we get money. So the sale proceeds is coming in as a cash inflow. And it takes into account the dates of each of the transactions, whether it's a buying transaction or a selling transaction. So for each transaction, the date of the transaction, which involves an inflow or an outflow, is also taken uh, from the record in order to calculate over a period of time, whether it's a quarter or for a year, given the various uh, cash flows that have gone in in the transactions, what is the percentage of gain that we have made? So for each transaction, the date of the transaction and whether it's income or a, a outgo or should be recorded. And with this, we can compute the IRR. Now, why is this important? Because now you may have uh, uh, brought in this 100 bucks, but you may not have invested immediately. So January 1st, let's say you set aside this 100 bucks, but you've not invested in the stock. You invest, let's say, only on 5th of January. And then you make the first sale on, on the 25th of January, and you got 105. And then uh, you were sitting on that for quite some time for to, to look for an opportunity to enter the same stock. Then you uh, found that opportunity on February 15th, and you didn't put 105, you put another 100 again. So this way of moving in and out and keeping some cash on hand, putting part of the process back into the market, all these various behaviors that we have, at the end of the year, let's say in December end, we say, okay, we have made 10 transactions, 10 round trips. We bought, sold, bought, sold. Like that, we have done 20 transactions or 10 round trips. This has happened at multiple times. So the IRR takes into account all that various transactions from the beginning to the end. Even though at the end, you got 200 bucks in your hand. Okay. So the... Uh, CAGR or the annual average return only looks at the beginning cash or the end cash, does not worry about what happened in between, and it computes, computes the return. Whereas in the case of IRR, we look at all the various cash flows at different dates in that period to compute how much money or how much return we have made. Okay. All right. So now here is the, uh, oops. Access Bank, okay? So December 98, um, I buy 100 shares of Access Bank and at three rupees 36 paisa. That was the price at which Access Bank was trading on December 2nd, 1998. And then I didn't do anything at all till Monday, 9th October of this year. And this Monday, uh, that's yesterday, the ending price was 996.25. That's a close. So I decided to sell it. So I bought 100 shares in 1998. I just forgot about it. I put it in a can and I forgot. And yesterday I opened the can, sold these 100 shares uh, at, at 996.25. So 25 years, this investment has been there without disturbance. And how many trades have I made? One round trip. I bought in 98 and I sold yesterday. One round trip and the initial investment was 336 for 100 shares. And I got yesterday when I sold 99.625. It looked pretty good. The absolute return is 29,550%. 29,550% is the absolute return. How did I get that? You just take the 99,625 minus 336. That is the actual gain. And divide that by 336. And I got 29,550. 
And I divide that by 25, I got the average annual return of 1,182%. But the actual CAGR, taking into account I have 25 years, is telling me that on an annual basis, this investment has given me 25.7% per year. Okay, This is the power of CAGR. It tells us that we have made 25.7% on an average every year for the last 25 years, which is pretty impressive. But the same thing, I follow another strategy. I don't put it in and forget. I constantly churn. And the same 3 rupees 36 paisa per share, I bought 100 shares. And till yesterday, when I sold it for 996.25, I did 554 round trips in these 25 years. Okay. So this initial investment of 336, which is 3 rupees 36 paisa times 100 shares, I sold some time. I took that money and went back again and I bought 100 shares. I kept whatever was balanced with me. After some time, I sold that 100 shares. And I, whatever profit I made, oops, I kept. And again, I went back. Like this, I made 554 trades, round trips, buying and selling 100 shares of Axis Bank in these 25 years. And yesterday, when I sold whatever I had made, I have 2,68,971 in my hand. So this is uh, the power of churning vis-a-vis -vis the coffee can. And this has given me an absolute return of 79,950% and an average annual return of 3,198, but a CAGR of 30.8. How did I calculate this 30.8? I have the end value, which is 268,971. I have the beginning value, 336, 25 years. So this gives me annual return of 30.8. But this does not take into account the fact that I have done 554 round trips. Cash went in, went out, went in, went out. And therefore, the IRR that I got out of this is 562%. Okay. So my actual performance is not 30.8, even though that is uh, uh, what the CAGR is. The initial investment of 336 has now become 2,68,971, which means I made about 31% every year. But taking into account this 554 trades, my trading performance has given me 562%. So my particular strategy for Axis Bank in going in and out using whatever criteria I've used, okay, is 562. Yes, uh, Oliver. Uh, Shankar ji, just wanted to uh, um, ask you actually, like this means on an average about 20 trades a year, right? That is right. So uh, is this uh, like uh, IRR taking in, into consideration the tax implication or it's just the absolute ret the return that you're getting? No, no. First of all, I'm not complicating the picture. I have not taken into account the brokerage tax. Okay. okay. I bought a 3 rupees 36 paisa, 100 shares, that's 336. And I sold yesterday and I got this. Okay. Tax yeah. and all is there in any any of these situations, okay? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I agree. In, in the case of the coffee can, it's only one transaction and the tax would have been only this year. Whereas in the case of uh, these 554 trades and I'm churning, every year I'm making gains and I have to pay tax. But I've not considered tax and all that, okay? So this 268,971 that I've made is the actual money that I've got. Okay, out of that I have to pay tax, that's okay. So I have not considered tax, brokerages and all that, okay? I'm just trying to explain, there are four different uh, uh, returns 
types and how it is calculated and how we are going to use each one of them, okay? So the IRR in this case is 562% is what I've made per year, okay? Based on these 554 transactions. Okay? Now, let me go to the next slide and show you how this might be useful. Look at Bajaj Auto versus Bajaj Finserv. Which company would you invest in? Bajaj Auto, sir. Bajaj Auto, who is that? Manoj, sir. Okay. So can you explain uh, why? Uh, uh, is there anyone who says they will invest in Bajaj Fin, sir? Anybody? Okay, so I guess either they've not made up their mind or they all agree with you. So can you explain why you would invest in Bajaj Auto, please? Both of them uh, starting in 2008. Okay, this return that I put 21% coffee can for CAGR or 26% uh, was calculated as of an exit yesterday. Okay, so please tell me why you would put your money in Bajaj Auto. So we'll have more trading opportunities like the churn IRR is 963%. Yeah. So for coffee can, uh, Bajaj FinServe is better. For uh, in and out, uh, that is kind of a trading or this one, uh, Bajaj, uh, Bajaj FinServe is better for coffee can. Bajaj Auto is better for this uh, churning type of uh, trading. Okay. okay, so you're saying if you decide to do a coffee can approach, you'd go and invest in Bajaj FinServe. FinServe. But if you're going to go with the churn strategy, you will invest in Bajaj Auto, huh? Okay. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. it is uh, Oliver. What do you say? Uh, um, actually, uh, my question is a different question altogether. Yeah. Uh, like what I was trying to say is uh, like, wouldn't your IRR also depend upon your the point at which you're entering and the point at which you're exiting? I mean, it, if you get it right, then only you would get the uh, required uh, superior IRR. Whereas if you like you enter and exit at the wrong moment, you probably wouldn't make this kind of IRR. I mean, I'm just asking, it's just a question. Okay. In this case, the same trading pattern is used or the strategy is the same that's employed for Bajaj Auto and Bajaj Finso, okay? So you have this data in front of you where let's say I'm telling you I'm employing a particular strategy uniformly across both these stocks. Now, uh, one sorry, thing, let me finish. Sorry to interrupt. I, I, I think we should go by Bajaj, uh, Bajaj uh, Finso because the CAGR is 31%. John C IIR is uh, your uh, I mean say uh, uh, it depends on the time when we enter and when we come out for individual uh, stock that that is okay but we are investing the money whatever money we are investing and what is the return we are getting that is more important and here we are getting th thirty one and twenty six percent and uh, yeah. And uh, if you compare your from the return is more in Bajaj uh, fine sir. Okay, who is this piece? Jayant Das. Oh, Jayant, okay. So what Jayant is saying is, if we go with the coffee can approach, if we are using the same coffee can approach across both these stocks, Bajaj FinServe is giving more, 26%. So for that approach, definitely Bajaj FinServe is better. Then he is saying, if we use the churn approach, he's using the CAGR as the criteria to judge or compare. And on the CAGR, FinServe is 31% versus Auto 28%. And therefore, he says he will put his money in FinServe. Am I right, Jan? Yes, sir. Okay. 
Any questions on that, please? Anybody? Uh, finally, we should uh, see how much profit we are making, whether it is whatever it may be. But if you see here, the profit percentage more in the Bajaj fine share. Uh, but IR, IRR is a, a individual frequency what we have made. Maybe three months I didn't invest, then I invest two months, like that. But finally, at the end of the year, how much we are getting, that is more important. That's why I, I think I'll go by fine sir. Okay. So what Chance is saying is, what matters to him is you put 336 rupees. What did you get at the end of the period? You got 2,68,000. For him, this 554 times you are trading is immaterial. What matters is the outcome, which is how much cash did you get by doing all this? You got 268 versus 99,000. So he says, I'll go with this. And it really does not matter whether I am looking at CAGR or IRR, because this IRR is for this 554 trades. Whereas this 30% CAGR here looks at this 268,000, uh, which is the cash I have on my hand at the end of the period, that's yesterday. So he says, I will go with FinServe, irrespective of which strategy I use. I will not worry about IRR. Then why do we have IRR? I, I may tend to agree with Giants, but I'm asking the question, then why would we... Look at this 963 and 52. Uh, sir, this IRR is, it is a finest way, what I understand from the uh, conversation, finest way to track how, how much return we are getting with a, with individual uh, in and out. With considering individual in and out, without considering the total period, suppose for uh, two months, month I have put my money and the balance 10 month I am sitting ideal or uh, again I put two month and uh, ideal for a couple of months. So to track those things is IRR. But if you see the end point means beginning and end, the CAGR is more important because how much money we are getting, that is profit we are getting. Suppose I invest 100 rupees. I'm getting 200 rupees. And here I invest 100, I'm getting at the end uh, 150 rupees. So is not it better to have 200 rupees? That that, that I understand. That's what I, I want to say. Okay. okay. Yeah. No, I said that. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, I think this, and I'm I'm not sure about this coffee can churn and churn CR approach. I don't know that strategy, but I think this uh, IAR indicates uh, the utilization of the fund rather than keeping the idle. So if the IAR is higher, the end value will be higher. Well, if if you are saying in this case Bajaj Auto, this 963 would result in uh, more cash. You yeah. know, CAGR is only 28 percent. Yeah, yeah. But uh, if I told you, nobody asked me this question. If I told you I started with the same one lakh here and same one lakh here, would that make any difference? Percentage wise, no. No, you see, the point is I asked you the question to compare. Yeah. But nobody asked me the question how much did we put money? What is the capital? Yeah. You know, what's the capital we employed in both? Correct, correct. Right? Correct. Okay. So, uh, Oliver, you have a question? Uh, sir, actually, Mike, uh, this thing is uh, like, you know, the guru of investment, Warren Buffett, also follows a buy and hold strategy. He doesn't really do too much of churning of his portfolio. Well, this this uh, session is not about which strategy we should use. I, I'm not getting into that. Okay. You can use any strategy. Okay. okay. At the end okay. of it, what matters is how much money you're making. And... Uh, Therefore, how will you calculate? So if you're using CAGR to calculate, then you compare CAGR of coffee can to CAGR of the churn. And in this case, you've made 7% more. Or in this case, you've made 5% more. 
So I'm not coming into comparing uh, which strategy to use. I'm just using these two strategies to show you and understand the return calculation, that's all. Okay, so I, I'm not advocating one strategy over other. Okay. That is not the purpose of this session. The purpose of this session is whichever strategy you use, how do you know that strategy is better than this strategy? Whether the coffee can is better or churn is better? In this case, the churn has given you 28%. Right? So I'm not trying to say coffee can is better or churn is better or what kind of churn. You know, you, you may have strategy A, I may have strategy B. So the whole idea is how do we decide which strategy is better? For that, we need to compare outcome. We need to compare returns. And instead of comparing uh, absolute return or the annual average return, CAGR or IRR is better. That is what I'm trying to come. Okay? Are you with me, Oliver? Yes, sir. Okay. So, to answer this question, is a Bajaj Finsev is better or Bajaj Auto is better? Maybe you could have asked me additional questions. But given the fact that there are only these four things staring at you, going by this, I tend to buy the argument that, uh, you know, even though on a transaction basis, on the cash flow basis, the strategy is made only 52%, which as Finso has made only 52%, on the CAGR, which as Jan said, talks about how much cash I have at the end of the day, 31% looks better, so I would put money in Finso is one way to look at it. Okay, now let me get into other things. So, fund managers show you their IRR. If you are working with any mutual fund and you have money with them or you have PMS, is the PMS showing you CAGR or IRR? And what is important for you? IRR or CAGR? CAGR. Yeah, at the end of the day, how much your initial investment, 100 bucks, has become, whether it's become 200 or 300 or 150. Now, if the money were with your fund manager, you did not do any of your trading, but you use a PMS, how does the PMS show you their performance? Do they show you CAGR or are they showing you IRR? CAGR. IRR. Mostly CAGR. IRR. IRR. Correct. Their source IRR. Exactly. So you think by looking at the IRR percentage, wow, the fund is doing very well. Okay. But is your investment making money? That is key, no? So for, from your point of view, what is important is you put in one lakh in that mutual fund on the PMS. How much has that one lakh become? Not how his strategy is performed in IRR. But most people don't know this difference. So they think when the PMS is publishing, they're doing an IRR of 52%, 30%. They think, wow, my money is growing. But your money is not growing. Your one lakh is slowly increasing. Okay? So it's important you, you know what measure to use for whom and for what, okay? That is what I'm trying to uh, bring out. Now, there's software available for portfolio management. Uh, not uh, all of them are ideal. Uh, in India, uh, there are a couple of them. One is called Kuber, Kuber. The other one is called M-Profit. Uh, M-Profit is more of a uh, company um, working on the software. Kuber is some one or two people trying to work on the side and build. It's very inexpensive, whereas M-Profit, you pay a, a bit more. Uh, but both of these software leave a little bit to be desired. Uh, they are not, in my view, 100% complete, uh, but M-Profit is not bad. Um, the, I say this because they all need to collect the data of your various investments. And uh, 
the uh, ticker symbol is not necessarily uniform across all the uh, brokerages. So uh, Zeroda might call ICICI Bank one thing, uh, ICICI Direct may call uh, the same stock with some other symbol, there's slight variations and all that reconciliation is difficult to handle and M, M Profit is trying to do it. Uh, but in terms of features, in terms of what we want, uh, none of them are giving us exactly what I would like to look at for managing my own portfolio. So I use Excel and keep track of uh, uh, all the transactions so that I, I can get uh, 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 what I want to see, okay? So you can take a look at this Investopedia article uh, on various uh, uh, trading software, okay? So that that's uh, what I have to present. Um, if you have any questions, now you can uh, ask one at a time, please. Doctor, I have one question. When we talk about CAGR, which is basically... Yeah. If I, if I had to compare to a bank deposit, the yes. compounding happens every quarter. Yes. So do, yeah. do we have anything to calculate that one? Yeah, here in this case, the CAGR that I put 28 or 31, when we calculate... That is we, annual, no? Yeah, so we, we calculate it quarterly, that's all. Okay. Yeah, the, the, that formula you can change, not a problem. Okay. You can even make it daily, you know, not an issue. Yeah. So the compounding period is for you to specify when you compute it, okay? Yeah. Okay. Shankarji, good evening. This is Sridhar here. Yes, please. Uh, yeah. So um, uh, uh, thank you. I, actually, it was a thought provoking session okay uh, so in my understanding can i say that uh, it depends upon the long term investor and short term trader or investor to compare these two values like cagr and irr because irr has some some churn sort of things IIR, irr because once one at the time you risk your money you have uh, uh, neither or nor it's like a head or tail because you you may incur some losses or you may income some profits. So if at all your profit comes, then obviously that would be a uh, adding boost to your uh, investment, neither or loss. But in coffee can, it's it's like what uh, someone also said. It's like uh, just closing your eyes and uh, uh, investing in Nifty Fifty for the for the very longer period, so that at the end of the day, obviously your CAGR is going to get tripled or doubled, whatever it is. But in the case of uh, uh, what you call the chunk uh, trades. So you, you may invest in a single stock or even in the Nifty 50. At the long run, you may also depreciate, not depreciate, actually, you may get a lesser percentage than compared to your coffee can investing. Uh, can I understand in that term, uh, what's your opinion? Okay. Opinion. First of all, what you see in front of you in your screen, I said both these stocks, the year of investment beginning Hello? 2008, yeah. So, which means 2008 to 2023, okay. 15 years uh, is the investment horizon for in both these companies, number one. Number two, if we had done the coffee can approach in these 15 years, as of yesterday, based on the stock market prices, the coffee can approach has given 21% for auto, 26% for FinServ. So... If I were to pick one of these two stocks based on the coffee can approach, definitely I would go with FinServ because it's given 26% versus 21%. But your question is, should we not go for the coffee can approach because it will definitely give me some returns because the stock market is going up. I'm saying, why, why can't, uh, how do you know that strategy is better than any other strategy. That is why I've compared the churn. Now the churn can be based on any number of uh, strategies. Uh, what you might have learned as PC rules, uh, sell when the yeah. price goes above nine DMA or when nine goes above four yeah. DMA and sell when price Thanks. comes below nine DMA. All these are part of the strategy, okay? So yeah, yeah, what, exactly. you, what you learned in PC scores is actually the churn strategy. 
He did not teach you the cognitive exactly. strategy. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah. how do you compare these two strategies? And the numbers are staring at you. Churn CAGR is 28% versus coffee can CAGR is 21% for Bajaj Auto in these 15 years. It's long term. So, the yes, answer is yes, right yes. in front of you. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes, Oliver. Okay. No, I don't. Uh, Dr. Dr. Radha Kishan. Yes. Hello. Yeah. One Dr. Second. Radha Kishan. Uh, Solomon. Yes. Ah, sir. If, uh, let's see, coffee can approach. Uh, uh, see, for, for example, some blue chip we are investing, for example, lever. Uh, Industrial lever or uh, uh, Larson and Tubro or HDFC bank. Uh, in that, uh, coffee can approach will only work, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, you're, you're <laughs> Sorry. Dragging, you're, no, no, you're dragging me into some other area. Uh, okay, which is not the purpose of the session. Oh, uh, no, sorry, know. sorry, sorry. No, uh, no, no, that's okay. All I'm saying is this. Uh, I am not telling you you should go for coffee can approach or the churn approach. All I'm telling you is, irrespective of which approach you are taking, you need to have a basis for deciding that approach. Uh, what is the basis? The returns that will generate. Understood, understood. I'm, I'm telling you how to, get, how to look at the returns. Sure, sure. That's all I'm saying. Yes, uh, Oliver. Uh, Shankarji, two questions. Yes. When you're comparing, first of all, shouldn't uh, you be comparing uh, two stocks in the same sector? Because one is an auto sector, which is cyclical. The other is a uh, financial. And secondly, uh, like uh, it's somewhat what uh, Radha Krishna sir has uh, just mentioned. That we will, uh, like, you know, what we learned in PC rules is you keep some stocks as your, uh, what your, your bedrock stocks, which you will hold for a long period. And there are some which are momentum and some which are active. So the question is, if you, if you have a churn strategy, then there is no question of keeping any uh, stocks for the long term. Okay. Uh, let me take uh, the first one, which you said. I'm comparing companies across sectors. Okay. See, this is over 15 years. So whatever seasonality has been there for either auto or finance industry has been taken into account in these 15 years. Therefore, to me, if I'm a long-term investor, I want to know which company is doing well irrespective of the sector that it is in, because this long term, the past 15 years, the behavior of these industries are figured into this return. Okay. So, at the end of the day, I am agnostic when it comes to sectors. What I am interested in is, whichever sector it is, which company is doing well to give me the money. Okay, and in this case, FinServe seems to be giving me more money than auto. Over 15 years, this is per annum. Okay, this is not 26% uh, for 15 years. This is 26% per annum over 15 years. Okay, which means it is doubling your money almost every three years. Okay, so that is why we are using this percentage return as a comparison. Now, I could have taken all the stocks in auto, all the stocks in financial services and computed the same thing and shown it to you. Okay. Now, in any case, you might say, hey, I don't want to put all my money in FinServ. I want to diversify. So how do you decide how much to put in auto and how much to put in finance? This number, the CAGR, is giving you that answer. Hey, if uh, FinServ is giving me 31%, then maybe I should put a little bit more. Instead of 3%, I'll put 4% there. And auto is giving me slightly less, so I'll put 2 or 2.5% 2 here. So you see, instead of 
equally putting money, the three percent across uh, thirty stocks, you can slightly vary that. And to do that, this number is giving you that answer. Okay, so obviously we are not going to put all our money in only FinServe. Okay, but if you are going to put thirty companies, you need to compare these 30 that you are selecting with respect to the 5,000. How are you going to pick those 30? By this CAGR, by looking at the last whatever number of years you're doing your backtesting of your strategy. Whatever be the strategy. Yeah. Did you get it? Did I ask you a question? Uh, yes, yeah, somewhat. Okay, so we are again talking only about one stock here, auto versus Finser. At the end of the day, you're not going to put all your money in only one stock. You're going to put it in 30 or 25 stocks. So we need to also therefore look at the performance of your portfolio, which we have not yet come to. Okay, we are now looking at how to apply CAGR or IRR to determine which is a better strategy, which is a better stock. So in order to decide uh, which is a better stock, given our strategy of churning, auto looks better because I'm employing the same strategy for auto and FinServe. Okay, and auto is giving me 963% versus only 52%. But as uh, someone said, in spite of it, at the end of the day, as of yesterday, I had more money on my hands when it comes to FinServe, employing the same churn strategy. So I'm not so much keen on how my trading strategy is performed, but uh, uh, what is my final uh, number on hand? Based on that, he said, I'll put money in FinServe rather than in auto. But we need to look at several others before we decide which are the 30 companies you're going to pick. And once you pick your 30 companies, how are you going to aggregate the returns and compute your portfolio of returns? Okay, which is a weighted average because you're not equally putting your money in all the companies. You, you might uh, put one less and one more. So you need to do what is known as a weighted average CAGR, okay? That's a bit more complex, so I'm not getting into that. I just want to leave you with the thought that number one, you need to know which measure to use to compare either strategies or stocks. And how do you compare stocks? By doing back testing and hopefully doing some forward testing, doing paper trading of the same strategy before you decide which one you're going to uh, work with. Okay. Any other questions, please? Okay. Yes. Uh, would it be possible to uh, share the, the formulas for the same? Uh, it's all in Excel, but I guess I can do that for you. Not a problem. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I will send you a sample Excel sheet. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? If there are none, I like to say good night. Uh, uh, we can uh, chat on the group. If you have any other questions, I'll I'll post some answers. I'll send you the Excel sheet for sure. Okay. Yes, thank you, Shankar sir. Yeah, thank, you, thank, you, thank you, thank you, thank you for taking the time. Yeah, bye. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Shankar sir. It was wonderful listening to the churning strategy. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Shankar. Thank yeah. you, sir. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Good night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. So let me. Start. Thank you, Shankar sir. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night.